Hello and welcome to Midnight Scribes Creative Vibes, where we speak to the best of the bronies and discover what makes them tick. Now, my guest tonight initially had me a little confused because a search for his name led me to a rather nice golf resort in Burlington, Canada. Now, our guest tonight does have some similarities with this place. They both reside in Canada. They're both called Tyndaga. However, unlike the golf course, the brony Tyndaga is an artist. He's a YouTuber, voice actor, reviewer. Okay, what isn't this guy? You do say that. The golf course is actually a great artist, better artist than me. It's kind of embarrassing. Is the golf course actually a better artist? Yeah, I mean, he goes to shows and stuff. It, it's really, it really is embarrassing. You'd think a golf course would just be a stationary thing. But no, he travels, he goes places, he does things with his life. It's horrible. And his art is so good, he always gets a hole in one. I know, it's... <laughs> Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that's a horrible one. I, if I didn't make one golfing joke there, no one would be able to forgive me. But, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is actually... I was just about to say how, how nice a guy he is and how random he is and extremely nice, but you can tell already this is Tyne Dagger. Hello, everybody. And how do you plead to those charges of being too nice and kind and all the rest of it and random? Um, I plead completely guilty. I can't help it. I can't take the guilt anymore. Send me to jail. No, please don't go to jail. I don't want to send a reindeer to jail. How do you How do you send a reindeer to jail? Uh, with two handcuffs, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine Santa would be like really annoyed having to pay the bail every time that the reindeer <laughs> sent to jail. Just like Rudolph, I told you, stop flashing the red light. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, we have to talk about your OC because you're a reindeer. I don't want to suggest that might be because you're Canadian, but is it because you're a Canadian? <laughs> Oh, part of it was, I mean, like, when I created the OC, I wanted to make it, like, something specific to Canada, um, and there really isn't any, like, horse or anything specific to Canada, but we do have deer, um, and if you go further north, we have reindeer, uh, so I'm like, oh, well, reindeer, that sounds like a great idea, so let's go with that, no one's doing it, and, um, you know, I needed a shtick, so I went with it. Well, it's certainly a unique look, I mean, like, anytime you see a video with a reindeer in it, or My Little Pony video, it's almost certainly going to be yours. Yeah, I've 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 cornered the market. You see, I've got the copyright, I've got the patent, I've got other legal stuff that I don't know how to name. It's going to be great. It is great. Yeah, have, have you met Have you met my uh, British reindeer, Italian Baga? I'm going to have to hunt him down. <laughs> Please don't hunt him down. Honestly, I mean, it's he's just a tiny little reindeer. I mean, I don't want to say much about him. I mean, apparently he's from Canada. He does art. He does videos. He does a lot of things very similar to you, but at a much lower standard. Man, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to like find him because this this is my market, you see. If there's anyone else, I gotta get rid of them. Oh, don't worry. Listen, look, his prices aren't dear. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's even worse than the first one. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> How many more puns can we get out of this? Like, we've already got golfing ones. We've got deer ones. We should have like a counter, just like any time we get a pun, this little ding comes up. <laughs> Man, it's gonna turn into a contest, I bet. Oh, definitely. It's like, you know, Scotland versus Canada, the pun, the pun, what would we call the competition? A pun test. A pun test. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound, that sounds absolutely brilliant. A pun test would be very good. But I'll tell you what, the, we'll see if any puns come up during the interview, but I have to go back to your OC just for a moment. Because, I mean, apart from being unique in terms of the fact that obviously a reindeer isn't your typical sort of OC, you don't have a cutie mark, which is very interesting. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, I don't like to make it, how do I say this? Uh, I don't like to uh, pin myself on something specific, and it's like, a cutie mark is like something that is permanent, and you ha you have to do that for the rest of your life. What if I don't like doing something for the rest of my life, you know? You, you don't really get that choice, because it's tattooed to your butt. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't thought of that before, I just got this image of like somewhere in Ponyville, just like a tattoo parlor, just like some really seedy side street place going, so once you get it, you won't be able to take it off, what do you want? And they get a Chinese proverb saying soup or something. <laughs> <laughs> I just want a butterfly. <laughs> you just, ah, oh, so for your cutie mark, you're going to be, oh, what would a butterfly symbolise? Um, Fragility. Being fragile, I don't know. Is that a word? Fragility? Fragility? Yeah, sure, why not? We might as well invent a don't, word. Don't check the dictionary. It doesn't exist. I'm not going to check the dictionary. I don't have one on me. I'm not that boring a guy. <laughs> Major, did you used to read the dictionary? It's a good read. I mean, there's a lot of excellent characters in the dictionary. 
Oh, definitely. And I just, and what I loved about it is that it's completely organized. You just go from A to Z. Yeah, and that's something that like other books don't do. Their words are all jumbled up and they're in different areas. But with a dictionary, it's all just in order, alphabetically. It's great. Oh, Good read, guys. I, I strongly recommend the dictionary. Um, Webster's, if you can, if you can get that. Oh, yeah, Webster's absolutely great. I mean, I tell you what, I mean, if, for example, if like Stephanie Meyer had wrote the Twilight books with the words in order, it would have been a much better read. I think it would, actually. And, like, you know, no, jokes aside, I think, yeah, you're right. It would be a much better read. <laughs> <laughs> Started up as a joke, became serious commentary. <laughs> We're taking cheap shots at books. Look at us. I know that is... How can we do that? So that's just that's just cruel. I shouldn't actually do that because I mean, as a writer myself, I should never criticize another writer. And you know, but I've got to talk about yourself because I mean, uh, this is actually what the interview is about. Remember, we talked about you. Uh oh. Yeah, I know. That did you know what you were signing up for? I I just thought we were going to talk about books. This is a book club, aren't we? Uh, on Tuesdays it is, but unfortunately this is Saturday. I think you come to the Saturday. wrong class. Mm. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I know we call this Midnight Scribes Creative Vibes, and it sounds like it might be about a book club, but no, it's about the creative people in the community. It's about you, Ty and Daga. You're a creative person. Oh. I hope, anyway. Otherwise, we'd be the you, ha- you had me all wrong. Wow. <laughs> surely not. Surely not. My producer surely couldn't have got the wrong person. Well, I'll tell you what. Something interesting about you, uh, Ty and Daga, that I find really interesting is the fact that you've basically just come out of nowhere. I mean, you basically just came out of the Canadian forest at the beginning of 2015, came onto DeviantArt, came onto YouTube, and basically just shot up. Well, that, that, isn't it fun doing it like that? You know, why have a, a starting like portion where you're struggling with the channel when you can just go nuts? No, I just got lucky, though, I'll be honest. Um, you know, some videos took off a little more than I expected, a lot more than I expected, actually. And it just happens like that, you know? That's YouTube, it's the fun of it. It's sometimes a little luck, um... And that's what makes it so exciting, I guess. So there was a lot of prep beforehand before you actually started um, your initial videos. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I planned things out uh, uh, well in advance. I probably about a month before I started doing videos and stuff, I actually had everything all planned out. I sort of had an idea of a couple of videos I would do to start off, and um, then I'd work from there. Uh, and I think it's really benefited. I think it's been a good benefit because I think a lot of people were – I don't like to, because I, I like to be a bit modest, crikey, but um, I think a little people, like some people were surprised always, like, oh, you know, you just, this is your first video, but it looks like this, wow. I mean, that, that's pretty cool. Yeah, but, I mean, I've, I've heard that you've done video editing and so on before you kind of came into the the forefront of the My Little Pony fandom. I mean, how did, like, what were you doing beforehand? Well, I actually did a channel called Timecraft. Um, where it's a it's a let's play channel basically. It was Minecraft. Um, it's a clever name. You see the rhyme. Oh, ah, really oof. clever. Um, so I had a bit of editing experience. Although with those videos, you don't have to do as much editing because it's just you know your, your game commentary and that's about that. Uh, so I did have to learn a lot in the editing software. However, uh, I had a good base, so it wasn't like I was just starting off. So I did know a few things here and there, but there was a, as well a lot of the things I had to learn. Obviously, that's given you a sort of great platform for starting your videos as time dag and doing your, and obviously you've been doing artwork as well. I mean, um, how did you come to be a part of the fandom? Um, it was actually through Fallout Equestria. Uh, this is it's a funny story. So I was playing Fallout Three, and there was this really hard quest, and I can't remember what the quest was. I don't have a good memory, and I needed help f- figuring out what to do with this quest. So I was searching online, you know, Fallout. I typed in Fallout into Google. Looking and there was Fallout Equestria, one of the options there, and so I thought, well, this is probably one of those forum websites that gives you, you know, helps and stuff from other people who have played the game. So I click on it and I realize, well, you know, this, this isn't Fallout Three at all. This is MLP, and I knew what MLP was at the time because there was commercials of it growing up. But obviously, I never affiliated myself with it. It it was for little girls, right? So you didn't really, I didn't do anything with it. Uh, however, I saw this cover for Fallout Equestria, and I'm like, wow, this looks pretty interesting. I wonder how they could combine the two, um, MLP and Fallout together. Uh, so I took a look at it, and I realized that it was a fantastic read, and it was like the best read I've, well, the best book I've ever read. And I'm like, wow, you know, if this is what this community has to offer, I want to see what more they can, what more there is in this community. This is great. <laughs> so that's when I started joining it. And um, that was about six months ago, I think. Uh, so, you've come in, so you've come into the community quite recently then and not through the show. 
Uh, not originally through the show. However, um, I did like the episodes. Uh, the first few episodes were uh, a little lackluster. It wasn't something that I would have personally gotten into the community with, but um, they started to get a lot better as time went on. I mean, a lot of people that are part of the fandom are kind of a few chances of the show and then do the fandom stuff kind of, you know, as their kind of response to it. Are you more connected in the fandom as, rather than to the show? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, the, the show is great. I love the show. However, I feel I am a little bit more connected to the fandom. It, it is the, the community that really drew me in uh, more so than the show itself. Like the people in this community are just incredible, you know? really awesome so everyone's so nice and so helping it's one thing that really surprised me actually when i first started was how helpful and kind people were um like you know trying to help me out and stuff i thought it was going to be a lot more cutthroat and you know everyone for themselves at least until i get a certain amount of subscribers or whatever before people take notice Uh, but no right off the bat it was literally everyone wanted to help me out i'm like okay this is great i love this place (laughs) I suppose that's the great thing about this community is the fact that it kind of adopts the ethos of the show itself, which is, you know, the idea of the sort of friendship is magic and, you know, the idea of community and love and all the rest of it kind of coming together. So it's always great to see when the community is so eager to help out the new starts. Yeah. And I know that, uh, I suppose, well, since you've been part of the fandom for a while, uh, or for a wee while anyway, are there people in the fandom that you'd be interested in doing collaborations with? Because I know you've been, you've been sort of considering that, or, or you've done one before with um, Mad Munchkin. Yeah. Um, as far as other people, uh, there's like Silver Quill. Um, I mean, he, he'd be like a one I'd really love to do a collaboration with. Um, very funny guy. Very interesting guy, too. Uh, I don't know. I don't really uh, worry too, too much about collaborations, though. It's not something that I, I make too much of a big deal on. Um, it's not like, oh, I need to collaborate with this person, I need to collaborate with that person. It's it's just sort of, you know, I, I do my own thing, and if uh, a collaboration idea comes along, I jump on it. But other than that, I'm not really, like, out looking for collaborations at the same time. So you just let it happen organically. If something comes up, that's great. But if not, you're not searching for it. Oh, yeah. Well, it's definitely a, a good way of doing it. I mean, it, actually, to go back to a completely different point, just because I can't believe I mentioned it, that Fallout 3 fan... <laughs> it's a great game. I mean, it's something that um, it's a very interesting sort of topic for a game. I think it's a something you don't really see too often. Yeah, I mean, it's it's such a great game. I mean, I have, I I remember seeing it. I think the first time I played it would, would have been about two thousand eight, Christmas two thousand eight, and you know I couldn't believe that a world that big and that expansive and, and beautiful could actually be done in a game. And so you know, but I still play that to this day. Love it to bits. Are you looking forward to Fallout Four? Oh yeah, Fallout 4. That's uh, coming out in November, right? I can't believe it's coming out so soon. I'm trying not to bounce on the bed every day for the idea of this game's no, coming dude, out. The last one was 2008. <laughs> I know. What's, my favorite What's your type anyway? scale? <laughs> I have no idea. I, I don't know. I, I buy so many games, I lose track of them all. But Fallout 4, cannot wait to see it. I reckon it'll be an absolute blast when it comes out. Oh yeah, it's going to be a good one. But uh, I'll tell you what, I mean, I want to ask, because uh, obviously we've chatted a lot over the last few weeks like we've played games together and so on and you know i've just learned that you've just done your exams as a student i mean um so how did you find the balance between doing your sort of art your youtube stuff and when you're doing your minecraft videos and the studying like how did you find that balance obviously there were priorities i hope my parents aren't listening but something priorities took you know precedence over others <laughs> <laughs> uh but no i i think i i had a good balance with everything um all in all it wasn't it wasn't too difficult though and uh, now that you've uh, you've uh, finished your study, and uh, I know I think you mentioned that you're going off to college in a couple of months. Uh, yep. How is that? Do you reckon that'll affect your uh, your output in terms of your art and your uh, your videos? Do you reckon there'll be a change in terms of when you go off to this course, or are you predicting any changes? Or uh, the, yeah, there there is going to be a, a big change. I really hope I can still keep making videos and keep making art. However, I really don't know at this point, and I don't know how like how much time I'm going to have to invest and how much free time I'm going to have available. So uh, we'll see. I really don't know, though. It's it's all up in the air right now. I'm hoping I can still continue this because I love what I'm doing right now. And um, however, you know, studying comes first, school comes first, and you got to focus on that sometimes, and you got to make well, sacrifices for it. Oh, exactly. I mean, obviously, what you're doing to advance your career and so on and your education is more important than just sticking to the fandom but hopefully we won't lose you i mean because uh sorry we want to see you disappear off the face of the earth <laughs> as soon as september comes i'm just gone <laughs> yeah it's just like 
We're just following the deer tracks, and it just ends in the forest. <laughs> Ty and Dega? Who is that? He never existed. And then if you start asking questions, there's people that start knocking at your door, telling you to not ask questions. It's horrible. <laughs> that'll, ask, that'll be what my producer starts doing to me if you disappear, going... Kyle, listen, he, he didn't exist. This never happened. This interview didn't happen. It did. I did not voice act him. You still have the wrong video. <laughs> yeah. I believe. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in the reindeer. I do believe in reindeer. I do. I do. He did exist. He did exist. I swear. And sometimes I see the antlers in the trees. <laughs> it's turning into like a, a really great sort of drama. Yeah, we could, I tell you what, listen, we could write the script, so this could be like some sort of new My Little Pony fan, fandom film. <laughs> Just... <laughs> I was thinking actually like live action, um, drama. I can't imagine you acting with a pair of antlers in your head. It would be very awkward, I imagine, and I'm, I'm a terrible actor, so... Oh, surely not. Oh, I really am. I don't, I don't do acting. Not Voice all. acting, maybe, but acting, no, no. Put me on a stage and I just shrink. <laughs> <laughs> Not literally, I hope. I, I do literally. It's just I, I get on the stage and it's like, Wah! and I, as I'm getting really small, my voice gets higher pitched because that's apparently what happens when you're when you get smaller, isn't it? Yeah, when you get smaller, you get a little bit more high pitched, and then you stay like this for ages. I cool. dare you to keep that voice for the entire interview. <laughs> I'll do my best. There's a bit higher. How's that? Oh, that is perfect, darling. Perfect. <laughs> No problem, Dainaga. I sound like a baby. Well, you sound like something. If if my baby sounded like that. This is like Rika if he was five years old. <laughs> I'm struggling to hold it because I'm a bass normally. So the idea of doing up falsetto or trying to do anything high pitched is like, it's something out of a horror movie. It's like if there was a mannequin in My Little Pony, I would be the one voicing it with that. Oh my goodness. Just like... Are you looking for Princess Luna? Na 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 na. <laughs> and that's when the nightmares began. <laughs> exactly. That is the voice of nightmares. If there's ever another movie with mannequins or puppets in it, or a Five Nights at Freddy's uh, film where they have to have some voice of the marionette, this is the voice of the marionette. <laughs> just like, you know, just. <laughs> that is terrifying. My goodness. Yeah, I'm slightly worried that that's actually going to haunt my own dreams now. <laughs> it's going to haunt my dreams, I'll tell you that much. Well, I'll tell you what, it's bring back some positivity and some happiness to it all. I mean, uh, like, obviously, you know of the show and all of the fandom. Do you happen to have a favourite pony or favourite episode? I don't really have... Well, I say that. I, I have a favourite episode, sure. It was, uh, what was it called? Make New Friends But Keep Discord? That that one? Oh, yeah. I think that's the right name. I can never remember the, the episode titles. That's the problem. I have a terrible memory. Uh, so that'd probably be my favorite episode. Uh, as far as a favorite character, though, it's got to be Fluttershy. In what ways? Like, is it just like the shyness or loving animals? or? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not a big animal lover, but it, it, a lot more the shyness, to be honest. Because I don't well, know about you, but I'm very shy. Oh. Well, any consolation, like... Whenever I've spoken to you, you've been incredibly gregarious. Like you've always been, like particularly. I know a lot of times we've been typing and so on. It's obviously a lot bit different, but you know, you've always, you know, had a great personality. You always seem to really get on board with whenever people are talking or chatting with you. You just, you know, you don't come across as particularly shy. You know, you seem to have a confidence in typing beyond your years. Well, that's the thing. It's easy to be, you know, courageous and outgoing when you're behind a computer, when you're behind a keyboard. Put me in real life situations, so I'm horrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, at some point we shall have to meet in person, some point in the future, to see whether you're just like that in real life or not. All right, I'll start swimming. I'll do um, I'll do the backstroke. And you don't have to swim. You do race those boats. No, 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 no. I swim. You swim. I d- I'll just sort of just... trot my way through the Atlantic Ocean. Just keep my arms about the water. Can I show my ignorance? Do deer swim? Pardon? <laughs> Generally, just asking the question: Do reindeer swim? Um, I. Put- I... I, this is the thing. I don't know much about reindeer, and I mean <gasps> the shock factor. But um, I just haven't done my research. Uh, I'm sure they do, though. Yeah, they must do. Yeah. I mean, they couldn't swim. I mean, I I, I know um, <laughs> in in Canada especially we've got a lot of lakes. So if they couldn't swim, it would be it would be horrible. Yeah, I mean, I just always thought reindeers flied. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Only a few of them can fly. However, they're like the famous ones, right? So everyone gets the impression that. We all can fly, but we can't. So you can't fly? I can't fly. I, I just sort of walk around. Aww. You know what? Hang on, wait a sec. I've got two wings. I can just fly over to you. 
Well, that's the thing, though. There's a lot of, like, currants and stuff over the Atlantic. Oh, it's fine. I like fruit. I said currants. <laughs> <laughs> that's the bird pun. There we go. <laughs> You're going to be on this pun counter. <laughs> I know. I'm not sure what the score is at. I think it's, like, 3-1 in the moment. I'm losing. I gotta, I'm going to have to make some big hitting plays later on. I know. Well, we just have to figure out what to ask next in order to bring out the puns. Because, I mean, I mean, actually, let's talk a little bit about your artwork. Because um, I haven't touched, I mean, I've touched on your videos a wee bit. But in terms of the artwork you do, um, you know, they're, like you said, when you came onto the scene, you kind of came fully formed. You know, you didn't come half-baked. I mean, how do you do the drawings you do? How did you prepare for it? Well, as far as drawings go, I only really started doing artwork like properly um maybe two months before i actually started the channel uh so yeah i mean since then like before then like you know growing up and stuff i never really took to art art class like especially in schools art class was always you had to do this one specific thing that the teacher would say and you'd get no freedom and the only freedom you ever got was around ninth grade or so or i think you guys call it year nine um and that's when you could actually sort of draw whatever you wanted, do whatever you wanted. But I was so awful at it that it was discouraging to really want to draw anything because you look around and you see all the other students doing all these really crazy things, all these really cool things. And here's me with stick figures with crayons. And I'm like, just hold on, I'm getting there. <laughs> well, I suppose whenever you're in school, like I, I mean, I did art when I was at school as well, and I was useless at it. I mean, I couldn't draw stick figures that's the thing. Stick figures, like, people think that, like, they're really easy. They're really not. Because you got to get the head right. And then the, the stick figure, it's it's really hard to, to get the, the sticks in the right place. You know, it's it's very confusing. It's a lot yeah. to manage. Oh, definitely. I mean, I'm, there's a lot you have to do there to avoid a sticky situation. Oh, there's no one. That's, that, was, oh, that was pathetic, even by my standards. That was pretty low. That was actually so weak, it wasn't even worth it. But I'll tell you what, uh, we're going to have to wrap up uh, just now, but I have to ask, um, is there anywhere we can find you at all in the wilderness? Um, I, that's the thing. I'm, I'm always moving. You can't find me. <laughs> I hear a reindeer somewhere in the distance. No, you don't. Oh, you're that right, I don't. A, that was a horse. Come on. And I, I can't tell the difference. They've both got four hooves. Hooves, yeah, paws. Paws, hooves? I don't know. What, what What's... Is that the right word? I have no idea. You're the reindeer. We should you look tell at the me. Dictionary. <laughs> I don't have a dictionary. I left it at home. I'm oh. at home. Oh, you see, I, I, I would grab a thesaurus, but those are extinct. <laughs> oh, boy. Are they? Yeah. With all the other dinosaurs. Oh, crikey. I actually missed that one. All right. Point to you. That, I just, I just I, want to get out of the scoreboard. <laughs> I know. Well, actually, I've been told that the scoreboard is going to be up at the end of the show, so we'll be able to see it after our interview. So I'll be looking forward to finding out who's won. And if it turns out you win, I'm having you on the show again to actually have a pan battle of some sort, some oh, sort of special yeah. video or something. It's going to be like a fight to the death, I think. Two go yeah. in, one go out. Oh, exactly. And I'm desperately trying to think of a pun to get an extra point just now, and I can't think of anything. Yeah, me either. I'm trying my hardest. <laughs> Oh, my brain's just stringing like mad. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, where can, while I try and figure something, where can we actually find you? Well, I mean, I, I always post my stuff on YouTube. Uh, however, in between uploads, what I usually do is I have uh, my Facebook page and my DeviantArt page. Um, those are the best ways of, you know, finding out what I'm doing between uploads, because obviously there's usually a long delay between uploads, because these videos take way too long to make. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, we'll post a link down below in the description so you'll be able to see Tyne Dagger and all his reindeer filled antics, so you'll be able to see anything he happens to be doing. I don't know what the score is for the panel meter, but we'll we'll find out one way or another uh, at the end of the video. Tyne Dagger, I've just got to say thank you so much for coming on the show. It has been so much fun. <laughs> Thanks for having me too. I appreciate that. Oh, don't worry about it. And, uh, but I'll tell you what, we shall wrap up the show there. Uh, thanks to Tyne Dagger for coming on to the show. Uh, the final word from the next scribe, as always, is please subscribe. <laughs>